Those things are not cute. Well, I hope you have a paper before you. We just got to the top of that paper on last week. And uh, I was giving you some examples of myself and uh, how we have to understand faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. But the world gives you doubt. The world gives you fear. So fear and doubt come about hearing, hearing the word of the world, hearing the word of yourself, hearing the word of others. To be so, to be told, you yourself worst enemy. Amen? Amen. Self-destruction. So we have to be careful what we say to our own self. That's why the Bible tells us you're the head, not the tail. That's why the Bible tells us we're more than conquerors. God already knows who you are because He created you to be great. So you have to say what God say about you. He the one created you. Amen? Amen. Amen. We have to be careful. We also learned that uh, I made a statement, and I'm going to say it again, because you need to hear it. How many times the enemy try to come up here and take my head off? How many times y'all that's been with me long enough saw how the snake come up in him and try to separate us and take him? Some he has managed to take out or whatever, but he's after the head. I asked the question, what is your pastor? Some people said a leader, a protector. Uh, a warner. God has sent you somebody, the reason you come to church, to protect you from what's going on outside the world. You need to know every time you hear the word up in here, every time you read your Bible, every time you get a word from wherever, that means that God has equipped you with what the enemy is coming after you with. So when you get the word, be ready to be tested. Be ready to be tempted by the enemy and tested by God. Are y'all hearing me? Yes. The enemy comes to do what? Say it like you know it. Because you need to know it. Because he wants your time. He wants your money. He wants your love. He wants your relationships. He come to kill, steal, and destroy. He can't take your body. But he can make you feel like you don't have one. He can't do anything without getting permission from God. He has to ask God. Hallelujah. But see, God don't send nobody who he don't equip. If he didn't gave you the word and you didn't pay attention, it's like school. You go to school, the teacher gives you all the information you need. When the test time comes, it's only your fault that you are not passing the test because you weren't paying attention. Amen? You got what you needed, so you need to take heed to what God is saying to you. You can't go forward. Hallelujah. The enemy is always after your ear. You have to understand the enemy is not ugly. The enemy is what, he knows what you like. He knows your weakness. He knows he likes to tell you, oh, oh, you're so beautiful. Oh, I miss you. Oh, I love you. How you doing? Oh, some of them like, some of the enemies like to rub all over you and all that stuff. Because they know you like to feel good. They know you like to hear things to make you feel good. The enemy ain't gonna come tell you, I'm the devil, I came to steal your time, your joy, your strength. Yeah, I've been sent to take you out. No. He's gonna do what it takes to get close where he can get you to listen to what he's saying. Amen? Amen. Amen. But you have to be aware of that. You have to be aware that God created you for greatness. But the enemy knew when you was born. He was after you was born. Ask your mama. Ask about some of the things happened to you as a child, even when she was carrying you, how the enemy was always on a rampage trying to take you out. He know who you are. It's time for you to know who you are. Hello, somebody. It's time for you, you to know that you've been sent to take over territory. Glory to God. <coughs> Hallelujah. Well, I always tell you this one. Watch the dog that carry the bone. See, we so busy trying to find out what they saying, what they doing. And the devil said, this one is easy. <coughs> hey, this one looking for trouble. So let me just give them what they want. Are y'all listening to me? Sometimes when you walk in a room and people stop talking, don't ask them what they said. God has protected you. You get in there, what, 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 what they were saying? <laughs> you want, it's a shame, but you have to understand your flesh love mess. Your flesh love mess. That's why you have to walk in the spirit. Your flesh love to be entertained and enticed. Love to think they're the center of attraction. That's your flesh. Everybody want to be looked at. You think I don't throw my clothes? I look in my mirror, I know I look good. But you think I don't be wanting nobody to say, hey, Pastor, look good. Oh, yeah, that make me feel good. And you're the same way. Amen? Amen. Some of y'all be late on purpose. Well, they, we call them uh, fabulous late. I don't know what we call them. That's what we call them in America. But you wait for the runway. <laughs> <laughs> hey, don't let me call y'all now. Amen? Amen. So, 
Um, I want to tell you a story, then I'm going to go to Joshua. We, we know we saw how Joshua, how God, your God, the God who loves you, he told Joshua who Joshua first was Moses' right-hand man. Moses had died, and Joshua was sitting there crying. There are some people, uh, lost loved ones, 30, 50, 60 years ago, they still crying on that day. They still not going to come outside on that day. Well, Mo, uh, Joshua was sitting there crying about Moses, and God told him, what are you crying here for? I gave you all these people. I did, Moses have left you everything, and you sit here crying. He said, Moses, my servant is dead. Rise up, Joshua, and take the people forward. Some of y'all might have a dead relationship. You divorced now, or that relationship is no more. Or your mom and dad have did you bad, and God have brought you through that. Or somebody beat you, or you had a, didn't have a job less. Whatever. The Bible said, press towards the mark of the high calling, forgetting those things which are behind you. You can't take all that junk with you and think you're going to go somewhere. It's too heavy for you. God has already fought that battle for you. Amen? Amen. Amen. So it's time to move forward. And know that while you're moving forward, the enemy is always trying to take you back with all means necessary. He does not play fair. He's out to destroy you. Hallelujah. There was a 14-year-old girl in America, and she was in the crazy house. She tried to cut her mama baby out of her stomach. Well, the grandparents didn't think that she was that crazy, so they went and got her. They bought her back. 14-year-old girl, if you see her face, you say, oh, no, she's so beautiful. Now, the 14-year-old girl was going to a school now with grandma and them, and a young boy in another area, mama wanted him to go to a better area, so she moved him over there. Where the 14 year old girl and the 16 year old boy got together. The grandparents told the 14 year old girl that she couldn't go out. She got mad, so she told the boy, I love you. I want to go out. And my grandparents won't let go. Let's go and kill them. But the girl, boy thought, you know, he wanted to get him a little something, something. He thought the girl was playing. So they went to the grandma's house. Girl put out a gun. She gave it to the boy. She said, Shoot him. He said, I, I can't shoot them. The 14 year old girl shot grandmama. Shot, granddaddy, and the auntie lived. 14 years old. The boy was sent to another place to get a better life. It's a setup. Listen to what I'm saying. The enemy is out to take you out, all means necessary. He don't care how he do it. And so long, I just heard that they had a bag sitting by the uh, trash can, and it was being the smell. They opened up, it was a lady folded up in there. After they investigated, the lady had been missing nine days. She left her husband to go with her boyfriend. See, some of y'all know the husband and the boyfriend. Y'all gonna hear that. Amen. So, she left her husband to go with the boyfriend. Everybody knew she had left her husband to go with the boyfriend. Found out the boyfriend, they backtracked her, they put the, her face on the thing, found out who she was. The hotel man called, said this lady was at this house with this man, this hotel, a couple of days ago. She stayed here nine days. So they did the recorder back. Saw the man taking the bag out after he killed her. Baby, it's a dangerous world out there, and the devil don't care how he gets you. All he wants to do is get you in your ear so you can follow him. We think these things are uh, just so happening. There's another thing happened. Uh, a, a couple in Florida was selling tickets Golden tickets to heaven. Oh. Golden, y'all heard about that? No. Golden tickets to heaven. A white man and a black woman married. They said Jesus told them to sell these tickets for $19.99. They sold tickets for $19.99. And they said a man from space told them if they sell these tickets, they can come to the outer space place and do all the drugs they wanted to do. And the man was going to fly them on his drug-made carpet to go there. It's funny. But they got hundreds and hundreds of people to buy these golden tickets to heaven. You'd be surprised what people listen to. Yeah. Hundreds of people to buy tickets to heaven. Gold plated. And the man, when the man got caught, you know, he told them, y'all need to dress Jesus, because Jesus is the one told me to sell these tickets. He said, if you don't believe me, put a, put a record on me and let me go so I can set Jesus up. A deceiver deceives. Someone that's deceived, he's out to deceive you. 
a liar lies. Someone that lies, he's out to lie to you. Amen. Amen. We look at these things like they're not happening. They're not only happening somewhere else, they're happening to you. If you listen to the wrong thing. Amen. Somebody tell you they love you and hey, they just met you 20 minutes ago or 20 days ago. And you believe that. You believe that. Maybe your mom and dad didn't tell you love. It's fine. Somebody told you love, so you just decide, well, this one must be really love me because nobody ever told me that before. You better tell yourself, I love me. Yeah. I love myself some me. So you can build yourself man up so when the enemy comes with all his tricks, you won't fall to everything. If you don't stand for something, you will die for anything. If you don't have standards in your life, the enemy don't have too much to trick you on. God told them to go in and take everything out. We playing with sin like it's funny. God told them sin was in the camp. He told Joshua to go in that camp and take everything out. We read on last week in chapter 6 of uh, how before the Jericho wall came down, the prostitute and her family was the only people saved in that town because they had did something for God. And she had told them, listen, I believe your God. See, we thank the prostitute don't know God. We think the drunk don't know God. We look at people and we prejudge them by what they look like out on the outside. Stop getting caught up in the what. Get caught up in the why. Mm -hmm. If you know your God, no matter what voice he use, you'll know whether it's God or not. Amen? Mm -hmm. Some people say, don't talk about God when you're drinking. Baby, you don't talk about nobody else. You better talk about God because you're taking something in your mouth that can cause you to do things you don't normally do. Amen? Amen. So you need to talk about God all the time. Preach. Don't limit the time that Amen. you talk about God. Amen. Hello, somebody. Amen. Hallelujah. Huh? Amen. So let us talk to, let us go. We read how, uh, I want you to read this one again. I ain't going to even go fast in this message because this is the time God said, we are getting ready to be blessed, but the enemy come with all his big boys trying to distract us, and we're falling too quick for distraction. Hallelujah. So, uh, if you have your paper, I'm going to read Joshua 6 and 25 again. So the Lord said to Joshua, get up. Why do you lie thus your face? Israel has sinned. Now remember, he this is not the first time he came to Joshua. He said the second one time when Joshua was trying to go forward, looking back, he was sitting there crying about Moses. Moses had done his job. Moses' assignment was finished. So it was time for Joshua to take the baton and take the people forward. So here he is again, sitting there with his head down. The Lord said to Joshua, get up. Why do you lie thus on your face? Israel has sinned, and they have also transgressed my covenant, which I command them. For they have even <coughs> some of the cursed thing, and have both stolen and deceived. Oh, my God. And they have also put it amongst their own stuff. Some of y'all bringing everything, anything up in your house, <coughs> in your circles. Oh my God. Let me tell you something about praying over your house. Guilty as charged. You can pray over your house, you can pray over your body, you can pray over your car. It has been anointed. But when the enemy come knock on the door, if you open the door and let the enemy in, I don't care how much oil you slap on that door. <laughs> you just open the door and let the enemy in. You pray over yourself in the morning. Lord, bless me, use me. God, uh, protect me as I go out. You go out, the Lord said, uh, for you to go here, you be obedient. And then somebody come and tell you something that don't sound like God, but because that's a, a, a prophet or that's a preacher or you know to be something else, you sitting there listening to that junk. Amen? Mm -hmm. The God's going to protect you, but you got to know when to listen, who ear, who is talking. You got to know what to open up your ear to. I don't think y'all hear what I'm saying. Yeah. You can pray over your house. And when you open up the door, the enemy will do like this. Uh, I just came to uh, give you this. I just want to say hello. And you said, no, come on in. No, no, no. No, come on in. Come on. Make yourself comfortable. The devil, make yourself comfortable. Relax. And you know, you, you, you get signs. And you see that there's something's wrong with this. But yet, you think you can make the uh, uh, demon comfortable. You think because it's your house, 
you know, God, he protected you. <laughs> but you opened the door. He protected your life. But you heard the person, I love you. Oh, hey. Now God tell you every day when you wake up in the morning that he loves you. But you heard it from somebody else, and he said, I, even I've seen, let me tell you something, I've seen people beat the death almost. After they get through beating, they say, oh, he beat me because he loved me. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh, he loved me. What kind of love that is going to beat you? Now, don't get me wrong, people have problems. They have watched mama, dad, brother, sister, uncle grow up in that type of life. So they think this is what they're supposed to do. So they have to learn that this is not what love does. But you, sitting there getting beat, and keep saying, oh, he loved me, oh, he loved me. And, and we make up. Ah, I listen, I'm guilty. I, didn't, I got beat when I was young, but I ain't never said because he loved me. I ran, he used to come find me and beat me, and I ran and I tried to beat, I even took a pistol. The whole town knew this man, whole family. And everywhere I go, I quit the man, oh, it was just a mess. It was just a mess. I had to get, I had to almost even, coming in the army helped me to get away from this man. He's dead now, but. <laughs> the lady, when I, when I met this man, let me tell you this right quick. And then we're going to read the rest of this. I was a player. After being abused, I became a player. I used to play people. If they didn't have money or a car, they couldn't be my man. And then when they started talking about doing something, going to bed, I would quit them. Next. Next. I'm just telling you the truth. Hurting people hurt, hurt people. people. I was hurt, and I'm just all I learned how to do was to hurt people. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So here it is. After I got through that episode, I said, I'm just going to find me somebody and fall in love. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I picked a beater to fall in love with. I did everything I could to make him fall in love with me, thinking I was going to fall in love with him. His cousin told me one day, she said, Larry will hit you. I said, won't, no, won't nobody hit me. I had my own gang and everything. He won't hit me. She said, yes, he will. Let me show you something. She told him a lie. Told him I was doing something. He came to me. And he said, you were swan. I said, no, I was what? He slapped, he slapped me, and I slapped him. He slapped me, and I slapped him. But his hits was a little bit harder than mine. <laughs> but it, it started there, and it kept going. It went on for about a year. You cannot allow things to happen and think they're OK, and think because a person, I made this man fall in love with me, and I didn't even love him. But I knew one thing, I wasn't going to stay there and let him keep beating me, telling me he loved me. Hello, somebody. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. I wasn't going to beat you. ain't going to mess my face up. Look, God took a long time to make me look like this. Amen. And I'm not going to let you mess me up. It's just like girls fighting. Vanessa can get mad with me, and she might have a real bad attitude, and she want to fight me. Baby, I'm calling the police. I'm not going to let you scratch on my face and hit me. It ain't like that can't hit me. Protect myself. I, I, I'm calling. Th there are people who have jobs to take care of people that get out of control. So I'm not going to sit and tell myself, I'm going to show you that I can beat you. Uh, it ain't about me being scared of you. It's about me thinking about, ooh, child, I'm 55 years old. I, ain't, I got enough scars on me. Yeah, yes, yes. <laughs> well, I'm not going to fall in that You said, what this got to do with that? Baby, the enemy is out to destroy you. All means necessary. You have to be wiser. Hallelujah. He said, there are deceivers around you, saint. There are people who have been deceived, lied to. So that's all they know how to do, to deceive and lie. You have to get delivered from them things. You have to get, hallelujah, grow up from them things. The things that you grew up with are the people that are around you trying to take you backwards. And they have also put it amongst their own stuff. Y'all bringing people around your circle that don't mean you no good. Once you find out that person means no good, you need to cut it off. Therefore, the children of Israel could not stand before their enemy. You can't even fight your own enemy because you keep on bringing the enemy in your circle. But turn their backs 
before their enemies because they have become doomed to destruction. You know what doom is? That means you're living a life that don't mean nothing to nobody. You're a waste, hallelujah. Doomed, destruction. Neither will I be with you. God said, I'm tired of taking care of you. You keep on listening to somebody else. You keep on doing the wrong thing. You can see the enemy and you're still playing with him. When you play with fire, you will get burned. Unless you destroy the accursed from amongst you. He said, cut it off. Cut them off. He said, cut them off. Why you keep playing with fire? Why you keep hanging out with people that don't mean you no good? Why you keep hanging out with people that ain't taking you nowhere? He said, they are cursed things. Cut them off. You, you had money. <coughs> so you still hanging with certain people. <laughs> ah, now your money funny and won't grow. Oh, you better hear me now. Oh, you better now. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, God said, cut them off. God himself said, go in and kill everything. So who are you to think that you can handle these little things that's going around? You cannot medicate. You can't love a demon. You cannot uh, uh, relax a demon. You can't do nothing. That, that devil was so... The snake was the lowest thing on earth. And that's what the first thing God used to trick man with. Spirits, God said he give you power over every creeping thing. The devil ain't gonna come to you on a snake. Hallelujah. Amen. But there are people who operate like snakes that are around you. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Amen. But you keep on playing with these snakes. A snake will bite you. A snake is a snake. The snake is not gonna change. Some people like entertaining those spirits. So the trick is for you. The devil is after you. Somebody read 20 to uh, the end of that on the next page, and then we'll get ready to close. And Ashen answered Joshua and said, Indeed, I have sinned against the Lord God of Israel, and this is what I have done. When I saw among the spoils a beautiful <coughs> Babylonian garment, 200 shekels of silver, and a wedge of gold weighing 50 shekels, I coveted them and took them. When I saw among the spoils a beautiful Babylonian garment, 200 shekels of silver, and a wedge of gold weighing 50 shekels, I coveted them and took them. 27. And he said to them, Thus says the Lord God of Israel, Let every man put his sword on his side and go in and out from entrance of entrance to the camp. And let every man kill his brother, every man his companion, and every man his neighbor. When you don't uh, stand for anything, you fall for... Oh, I'm sorry, baby. You yeah. go to take this paper. Okay. This one. Yeah. You have another one. Yeah. Yeah, it's in the same paper. All right. Well, Remove that paper. And take this one. Start there. Ah, all right. there. And there they are, hidden in the ark in the midst of tents with the silver and the eight. So Joshua sent messengers and they ran to the tent, and there it was hidden in his tent with the silver under it. And they took them from the midst of the tent, brought them to Joshua and to all the children of Israel, and laid them out before the Lord. Then Joshua and all Israel with him took Ashan, the son of Zerah, the silver, the garment, the weight of gold, his sons, his daughters, his oxen, his donkeys, his sheep, his tent, and all, the, and all that he had. And they brought them to the valley of Acre. And Joshua <coughs> said, Why have you troubled us? The Lord will trouble you this day. So all Israel stoned him with stones, and they burnt them with fire after they had stoned them with stones. Look what God told him to do. Some of y'all would rather be told a lie than to tell the truth. He brought them out. He said, what have you done? They're sitting, Lord, tell me what you did. He told him what he did, and he still, him, his family, and everything that belonged to him, he still stoned them, and they burnt them after being stoned. I don't know who you keep playing with or who keep getting your ear, but God said, cut it off. If you want to go to the place God is trying to take you in this season, cut it off. God said, I done done this, I done done that, I gave you everything that you have asked me for. But just like I told Joshua back then, I'm telling you now today, cut it off. A deceiver deceives, a liar lies. Even, you know, we so full of 
uh, unbelief and untrust. To when somebody tells the truth, we don't believe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we rather believe a lie than the truth. Are y'all listening to what I'm saying? Yes. If somebody uh, tells us the truth, this man told them the truth, and God said, He didn't say, Forgive me. <laughs> he didn't come because he uh, came repenting himself. He got caught. Somebody did something, they got caught, and now they tell you the truth. That, that, that doesn't mean they was ready to tell you the truth. <laughs> That don't mean the person changed because they got caught. Now y'all listening. Yes. That don't mean they're going to be somebody different because you exposed them. They got caught. And then they told the truth. So after they got caught, just like the police, after you get caught, you can't, what you going to say? You caught them. Where you going? To jail. And after you finish your sentence, then you'll let you out. And then when you get out, guess what? You're on probation. You on probation. It's easy to uh, be good in jail. You can't do nothing. It's easy. It's easy. Some of y'all think a fast is hard. It's easy to go on fast. It's after the fast when the devil come and attack you. It's after you get out of jail when you have to do what you're supposed to do. Hello, somebody. Yeah. They only told the truth because they got caught. How many people you done got? And they told the truth now, now they come. That don't mean that they are ready. That don't mean that they have been delivered. That don't mean it's time for you to expose yourself again and give them all, hallelujah, Jesus, that they're asking for. Stop giving yourself to anything and anybody for the enemy to take you out. Trust in the Lord with all that heart. Thank you for that poem. Give her another hand clap of praise. He said, in all thy ways acknowledge him, and he will direct your paths. Trust in the Lord. Secondhand smoke kills. Secondhand smoke kills more people than the smoker itself. A deceiver seems like they're getting away because they're being used to deceive. You see people out there, they should have been in jail. No, that's their job. They're setting people up. They're around, they're, they're, the devil has disciples too. He has people to go around and trick them to get do things that's not of God, all means necessary. That's his job. He knows his job. He's been doing, and listen at this, the devil don't have no new lie, y'all. He's telling you the same lie he told your great grandmama. The same story. You cute, you fine, I ain't never seen nobody like you. Well, that's true. Because <laughs> we're one of a kind. But that should didn't make you give your all in all, or do your all in all. That should make you give up your life. Birds of the feathers flock together. Show me who you walk with, and I'll show you who you are. Why you want to take something that don't belong to you, as if you, when you came upon the scene, things changed? The ways of a man seemeth right, but their destruction thereof. God said, trust me. The ways of a man seemeth right, but their destruction thereof. My way